What is up guys, Joe Snow right here. Today we're discussing about jailbreak, about iOS 9.3.2, why is this build the most important you've ever seen, and of course we're discussing about jailbreak's status, where we are, what are we waiting for, and when it will be released probably. So if you're interested in this kind of updates, I invite you to stay till the end. I have some important information for you that will make you to get a bigger picture on what is jailbreak and why it takes so long. And if you're not interested in updates or jailbreak at all, I invite you to go on my channel and search for another kind of videos. I'm pretty sure you'll find something for you. For those who decided to stay with me till the end of the video and are interested in jailbreak, thank you and let's start. At first, I'm going to explain you what is the jailbreak process itself, because you get to understand something if you know how it works. It's exactly as you disassemble a, a, a machine and you get to know every piece inside. You will get a bigger picture of it and you will know better why it doesn't work, why it works and how, it, uh, how you can make it work again if it's broken. So, the jailbreak itself is basically gaining access, the root access, to the phone. You probably know that, but also it requires a few exploits. And from now, the, uh, the bigger scheme complicates itself. Let me tell you, exploits are basically holes in the operating system, in iOS itself, that makes the phone vulnerable to a COD. A COD that you're going to execute using a payload, which is basically a file containing that code, that will trigger an effect. The effect can be a crash, an error, a panic, a uh, execution of a file, and so on. We don't enter in this sub subject, at least not in this video. But jailbreakers usually require at least 10 exploits in order to make the jailbreak work. Why 10? Why that much? Well, iPhone and iOS itself has evolved. A lot of things has evolved in Apple's ecosystem and of course they evolved because of jailbreakers. We can't blame them for that, but Apple basically learned from jailbreaks and from jailbreakers. If jailbreakers found vulnerabilities in the kernel, of course the um, Apple team fixed the kernel and so on until you can't find any more anything because everything is patched. Well, from time to time an exploit arrives. Why? Because Apple makes new versions of their firmware. And with new versions of their firmware, they fix something, but they can get anything else broken without knowing. And they release a broken firmware that actually works. Everything is perfect on the phone. But if you take a look inside the IPSW and you actually try, you might find a little hole that might not affect the phone's functionality, but will, would allow you to execute a code or something. This is basically jailbreaking, and this is why it takes so long. Because you don't get this thing as on a restaurant, on a plate. You have to search for it, you have to work for it, you have to test a lot of codes and to see what happens when you try something. For example, what happens if I write break? What happens if I, I don't know, if I try to overload a file? Will it crash? Will it survive? Will it make the phone vulnerable to something? It's a lot of trying and fail. Try, fail, try, fail, try, success. And when you get the success, you move to the next part. You have to have a lot of kernels, uh, kernel exploits because the kernel itself has something called sandbox. Sandbox makes sure that the code you're running is signed and won't affect the phone's functionality. Apple introduced that in order to prevent viruses and things like that. It's not a bad intention from Apple. They want to keep you safe. They want to keep your information safe against any thieves. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty sorry for Android users that are watching this for now. I, I don't say that iOS is better, but in this field of security, iOS is high, sky high uh, compared to Android. Because on Android, you can grab anyone's data by simply connecting the phone to the computer. Well, on iPhone is different. You have a lot of code, you have a lot of protection, a lot of encryption, certificates, and so on. And this is good. But when it comes to jailbreak, breaking on those security layers is not that easy. And this is what jailbreakers do. They try to break in those security layers, and when they manage to do that, they basically... Uh, release a tool for that. This is why it takes so long and this is why it's not on the go. So, 
Now that we know that, what it means? It means that every time Apple releases a new firmware, jailbreakers have to do the same work over and over again, which means decrypting the IPSW, well, at first downloading it, decrypting it, but first you need to find the keys, so you have to have an iBoot exploit in order to grab the keys from the AS engine, another layer of protection. Then after you have the key, you decrypt the, um, the uh, file system. Let me show you what the keys are. If you go on the iPhone wiki and go to firmware, you can find a lot of keys, well, partially for a few devices, because not every time the key can be found and not every time the, um, the founder publishes the keys. But if you go here on iPhone, and I'm gonna go to iPhone 4S because it has the keys published for the latest version, iOS 9.3.1. I'm gonna go here for iPhone 4S. You can see everything that is blue has the keys. When it comes to red, you don't have the key for it. But here we've got the key for, uh, let me see, 3.2. For S, okay, you have here, when you click here, there are a few keys and I'm gonna explain them all. Okay, the build number is Eagle for this version and you can see root file system keys, update RAM disk, restore RAM disk, Apple logo, battery charging, battery plugins, iBoot, IBSS, iBeck, Glyph, device tree, kernel cache, LLB, recovery mode. Everything has different keys. Those keys are grabbed by jailbreakers or by individuals like I Hate Snow and Xerob. And those keys allow you to modify the IPSW, to decrypt it and see the applications inside it because Apple don't really like you to watch their stuff. So after they have those keys, they decrypt the file and search for exploits in the kernel. What they use? Of course, if they have OS 6, they use Hopper, an application to disassemble files to the code level. And if they have Windows, they use IDA Pro, but it's not something um, very important. Well, in this point, you can no longer be a beginner in order to do this work because it requires you to know assembly. Assembly and ARM assembly, a branch of assembly, is a programming language for machines and it's Terrific, it's very hard to be understood and it's very hard to, to learn. It's something that you should probably never use and uh, unless you pro you're programming an operating system or something like that, you will never use as a programmer this kind of um, um, language. But they use it because they analyze the code level and find those holes. So what's wrong? Why we don't have a jailbreak just yet? It's been six months, somebody said. Well. Apple kept patching things up until finding an exploit was very hard. And Pangu basically managed to create the iOS 9.1 jailbreak. If we go here on the Pangu's page, let me show you. I'm gonna close this thing, we don't really need it. You can see Pangu released iOS 9.1 jailbreak, but releasing a jailbreak is not that easy they have to basically wait for things to settle down. For example, Apple has for the moment iOS 9.3.1 signed, but they also have iOS 9.3.2 in the uh, fourth beta or fifth, I, I can't remember. What this means? This means that if I, as a jailbreaker, create a tool for iOS 9.3.1, I release it, you manage to jailbreak, a few people manage to jailbreak, Apple see the tool, and after that, they release iOS 9.3.2, patching my exploits and killing my jailbreak. This is why they wait. And uh, the scenarios have been in this way that managed to make them to not be able to release something because Apple kept releasing a lot of um, dummy updates for their iOS in order to keep the jailbreakers from uh, from releasing things up. Yes, it's true, jailbreak is becoming uh, very hard because after finding a lot of exploits and a lot of vulnerabilities, you, you, get, you get not to have any more exploits, you get not to have any more holes because Apple patches them. They, they learn and if you find an exploit, if you find a hole in this firmware, in the next version they will patch it and you will never find that hole again and you will end up out of the holes. Oh god, how sad that sounded. Anyways, 
you got the idea. At some point, it becomes very difficult to find those holes in the operating system. And when they do find the holes, they manage to keep them and they want to keep them for uh, a time when it's safer to, up to release. And when it's time, when is that time? Somebody will ask now. It's been six months. Yes, I know. It's, it's a terrific time to stay with, without a jailbreak. And I can tell you that they will release a jailbreak by the time iOS 9.3.2 will be released. Now we are on the beta. And the WWDC event is coming. WWDC will be um, in June during the uh, 13 to 17 days on the San Francisco, as you can see from here, and it will unveil the first iteration, the first beta of iOS 10. This means that after iOS 9.3.2 gets its final release and ends up with their beta, the jailbreakers will have to analyze it, to decrypt it, to see if anything has changed since the betas, and after that, to test their jailbreak and finally release it. Why? Because it will be safer. Apple won't keep the track of it or they will not do anything until iOS 10 gets released because they have to focus on iOS 10. They have to, to show you something on this WWDC event that costs you $1,060 to attend. So they really have to show you something important at, uh, for this, this price. Therefore, they will focus on iOS 10 and will not release anymore 9.3.x. I explained why it's important not to release any more firmware updates for a version that has a jailbreak because they can patch it. Well, when this jailbreak will come, when iOS 9.2.2 will be released, I, I can assure, assure you that the jailbreak will last for a long time until, until iOS 10 will get, it will get its release. Why? Because as I said, iOS 9.3.x is dead. After iOS 9.3.2 gets released, they will basically drop it, they will basically no longer care about 9.3.x and about 9.x in general. They are focusing on 10. Therefore, they don't really care if you jailbreak it because they will release 10 and it will kill your jailbreak. This is how it works, this is how it worked uh, since the very first iteration of Cydia and this is why it takes so long. So, in order to sum up these things, Shellbreakers are waiting for iOS 9.3.2 to get its final release because for the moment it's beta and everything can change. And uh, after it's safe, after iOS 9.3.2 is released, they will release their, their jailbreak application that will probably last until iOS 10 is up in, in March, sorry, in June. So this is basically it, guys. This is where we are, we're waiting. There is no way to jailbreak iOS 9.3.x for the moment, nor iOS 9.2.1. You can only jailbreak iOS 9.1 for the moment using Pangu or if you're on an Apple TV, tvOS 9.0.1 or 9.0. So, basically, if you are on iOS 9.0 to iOS 9.1, stay right here. If you are jailbroken, do not update. Do not update to anything. Ignore any message telling you that there is a far more update. I know Apple can be very, very, very irritating in this point because they will pop up a lot of notifications that there is a new firmware. Simply ignore them and pay attention before clicking. They can trick you into installing it later. They are very good at that. So do not update until you see a jailbreak tool. This is something that should remain in your mind, engraved in your memory forever. Do not update to a newer version of iOS if you are jailbroken until a jailbreak for that version exists. Do not think like, mm, I'm gonna update, probably in a few days or a few weeks there will be a jailbreak. Look, it's been six months. Do not update. Simply stay with what you want and what you have because the new iOS version won't bring you more facilities than the jailbreak itself brings you. So this is what I'm asking you to do, not to uh, update when you are jailbroken, not in this uh, time frame, any time. So uh, this is basically it, guys. The only websites you can trust in, in terms of jailbreak is english.pango.io and taiji.com not Taiji 9, not Taiji jailbreak, not anything, taiji.com. 
Unfortunately, they didn't release any jailbreak since iOS 8.4, but they are a very active uh, jailbreak team and trusted jailbreak team. So we have to take them in consideration, even though Pangu seems to be much possible to release a jailbreak. But do not trust any semi jailbreak, any partial jailbreak that will ask you to pay money in order to install Cydia. Uh, do not install those Cydia alternatives like, I don't know, I, I don't have any um, anything in mind right now, but there are a couple of things that that aim to allow you to install a few tweaks, a few applications, if you pay $12 a month or something like that for a subscription, don't, don't get that thing. Don't, simply don't get that thing. It doesn't, it doesn't really worth the money. And it's not Cydia, it's not jailbreak, it's just, it's just provisioning profiles that will get your application, but it won't work. There, there is something I, I saw on a friend's channel that lets you basically install iFile and a few other applications if you pay $12 a year for a subscription. But it doesn't really, it doesn't really work. You should probably get I, iFile to browse the file system. This is why you get it. But if you're not jailbroken, iFile will only show the uh, public folders. You, you will not have root access, so you won't be able to see the good stuff that you want. So basically don't fall for that kind of CD app, app store alternatives or something like that. And moreover, if it's paid. Basically, just wait, a jailbreak will be here. Do not say that jailbreak is dead and do not say that jailbreak will never come again. It will come, just have to settle down. iOS 9.3 will get sorry, 9.3.2, will get released in a few weeks or a few days, I don't know. I don't really know their time frame, but soon. And this month anyways. And of course, we will have a chill break after that. Do not forget that staying updated by subscribing to this channel will keep you updated every time something re is released without any uh, copycatting, without any uh, click biting videos or something like that. I only post important videos in which I describe something, either I describe something or I basically show you how to do something. So stay updated by clicking the subscribe button right now. It doesn't cost you anything, I guess, it's free. And if you like this video and my explanation, give a thumb up to this video. If you don't like it, it's your right to thumb down the video and I am okay with that. And thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you understood what's the situation for the moment. If you like the channel, do not forget to visit my other videos. I have plenty of videos in everything that means iOS. And yeah, click the subscribe button. I really hope you like the design of the channel. Till the next time, I'm Joe Snow. Goodbye.